Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and get started with these simple harmonic motion notes. So some of you might be asking yourselves, what is simple harmonic motion? Well, I'm glad you asked. Simple harmonic motion is a symmetrical back and forth or up and down motion. And we'll talk more about this in a sec to really show you some examples of things moving back and forth or things moving up and down. We call each full movement an oscillation or a period. So when it goes back and forth, that's one period or oscillation. Same with it moving up or down. A period, which we just mentioned, is the time it takes to complete one full cycle. So if I asked you what the period of an Earth year is, you would say 365 days, because that's the amount of time it takes for the Earth to complete one cycle around the sun. Or if we're talking about a period of rotation for the Earth, well, a period of rotation would be 24 hours, meaning it takes the Earth one day to rotate all the way around. Pendulums and springs are two specific objects that experience simple harmonic motion, and we're going to dig a little bit deeper into these as we continue with our notes. The equation for period is going to be T equals 2 pi over omega or 1 over F. 2 pi over omega is similar to what we were using in our previous unit rotation, and 1 over f just means 1 over the frequency, which we'll talk a little bit more about on the next slide as well. So this is just a gif of a pendulum, just an object swinging back and forth, and it is fixed by a string. And then this is a gif of a spring moving up or down that has a mass attached to the bottom. Another example of the spring could be a spring on a table that is sliding left to right or back and forth. So I mentioned that we're going to talk a little bit more about period, frequency, and position, and here we go. The equation that we had before, the period equation, but we're going to explore it a little bit further. So we said period was the time it takes to complete one full cycle. F in this equation stands for frequency, which has the units hertz or one over seconds. Frequency means the number of oscillations or cycles per second. So in other words, how frequently something is occurring. Frequency is the inverse of period. So when we say frequency is the inverse of period, that means that as period increases, frequency decreases. As frequency increases, period decreases. Which makes sense because as the oscillations or cycles per second are increasing, the amount of time it takes to complete one of those cycles or one of those oscillations would have to decrease. There are specific period equations for springs and pendulums and we'll talk about that below. As omega or f is increasing like we said above, period is going to decrease. So omega we remember is our angular velocity and as angular velocity increases, the period or the time it takes to complete one cycle will decrease, which makes sense. If I had a merry-go-round, the faster that merry-go-round is spinning, the less time it's going to take to complete one cycle. Therefore, we can just say that rapid motion has a short period and a large frequency. So now we have this equation, which is x equals a cosine 2 pi ft. And let's talk about these variables. x is going to stand for position or the location of an object. A stands for amplitude, which is measured in meters, and amplitude is just the maximum displacement from the equilibrium point. F, again, stands for frequency. T, in this case, stands for time, which we know time is measured in seconds, but it's super important that this T, we notice, is lowercase, so it's just normal time, which means that it is not the same as period. And then obviously we know cosine is just a trig function and we know pi is just pi. Let's take a look at pendulums. For pendulums, we can say that they experience simple harmonic motion and a pendulum is just a weighted object that can swing freely back and forth. So up here, I have a GIF again showing a weighted object that is just swinging back and forth, kind of like Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball. The equation for the period of a pendulum is given below, where we have TP, meaning period of a pendulum, 
is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. And again, I have another GIF showing some more pendulums of different lengths and how their periods change. We can see that the blue pendulum that has the shortest length also has the smallest period. Then we have the brown pendulum with the medium length that has a medium period. And then the black pendulum with the longest length having the longest period. Again, TP just stands for period of the pendulum and that's measured in seconds. L is going to stand for the length of the pendulum, which we measure in meters. G is the acceleration due to gravity. It's important to note that gravity is going to impact the period of a pendulum, meaning that if we brought a pendulum to the moon, we would expect its period to be different than the period on Earth. If we just look at our equation, we can see that G is on the bottom. So if we took this pendulum to the moon, we know that G on the moon is smaller, meaning that a smaller number on the bottom of our fraction is going to give us a bigger period. So the period of a pendulum on the moon would be longer than the period of a pendulum on Earth. Let's take a look at springs now. And we know that a spring is just a coiled device that returns to its original shape after it is stretched or compressed. The period of a spring is each full up and down movement. It looks something like this if it's moving left to right, or something like this if it's moving up or down. The equation is Ts equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Ts is going to stand for the period of a spring, which is measured in seconds. m stands for mass, which is measured in kilograms. And notice it's the mass located at the edge of the spring. And then k stands for the spring constant, which is measured in newton meters. Let's talk a little bit more though about that k value. So we said k is the spring constant. So we remember that spring constant comes from our force equation, where force spring is equal to k times x, where fs stands for force spring, which is measured in newtons. k again is the spring constant, which tells us how much force is needed to stretch or compress a spring. A big k means that it's stiff or hard to stretch slash compress. And a small k means that it's loose, meaning that it's easy to stretch or compress. X is the distance the spring is stretched from its equilibrium point. A nice property of simple harmonic motion is that we can graph the movement of an oscillating object as a function of time, as seen on the graph below. The period is going to be one complete cycle. So from up here, it goes down, and then it comes back to where it started. That would be one complete cycle. So this wave takes t time to complete one cycle. If we're trying to find the amplitude, we remember that amplitude is the maximum displacement of the wave, so that would be from the equilibrium, which I would argue is right here, to the highest point. In this case, the lowest point is right here, so this could be the amplitude, or this could be our amplitude, or that could be our amplitude. They all have the exact same amplitudes. Let's take a look at another example. A student extends, then releases a mass attached to a spring. A graph of the mass's displacement over time is shown below. What is the period of the oscillation? So we just said period is how long it takes to complete one cycle. So the way I like to think about completing one cycle is how long does it take to get back to where I started? So I'm going to start up here at what we call a peak, and then I go down, and now I'm back at the peak. So the time it took was one to three seconds, meaning two seconds. Now it's gonna ask, what is the frequency of the oscillation? Well, frequency is just the inverse of period. So the frequency is one half hertz or 0 0.5 hertz, meaning that every one second, we have half a cycle, which makes sense because if I'm looking here from zero to one seconds, I have half of a cycle. Lastly, it asks us what the amplitude is. And the amplitude, like we said before, is from our equilibrium point, which would be right here, to our maximum displacement, which is up here. So the amplitude in this case would be three centimeters. Well, let's take a look at another example. This one says two blocks are connected to identical ideal springs, and they are oscillating on a horizontal frictionless surface. The motion of blocks A and B over time are shown in the graph below. Why are the periods different for the blocks? So we can clearly see that this block B has a period of two seconds. And we can see that 
block A has a period of four seconds. So block A's period is twice as big as block B's. The question is why? If we look at our equation below, we can see that the period of a spring is dependent on two pi square root m over k. We notice that they have different amplitudes, but if we look at our equation, amplitude does not impact the period. So two pi is basically a constant. So the only things that could change is m or k. Since they're both the same ideal spring, that means that their k values are identical. Therefore, the only difference would be m. Since block A has a bigger period than block B, that would mean that block A has to be heavier than block B. Let's take a look at a math example now. A 0.8 kilogram mass is attached to an ideal spring that oscillates horizontally with a period of 0.5 seconds and an amplitude of 0. 0.3 meters. What is the spring constant of the spring? So we know that mass is 0.8 kilograms, period is 0.5 seconds, amplitude is 0.3 meters, and the spring constant is unknown. Our equation for period of a spring is 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So since we are solving for spring constant, we want to rearrange this equation to solve for k. So our first step is squaring the equation so we get something like this, where period squared is equal to four times pi squared times m over k. Next, we're gonna rearrange for k, and that's gonna give us an equation that looks something like this. k is equal to four times pi squared times m over t squared. And then all we have to do is plug our numbers in and solve. Plugging our numbers in, we find out that k should be 130 newton meters. Let's try another example, this time with a pendulum. A pendulum has a mass of 0.06 kilograms swinging at a small angle from a light string with a period of 1.4 seconds. What is the length of the pendulum? So the mass of the pendulum is 0.06 kilograms. The period is 1.4 seconds. The gravity we're assuming is on earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the length of the string is unknown. Looking at our equation, since we're solving for L, that means that we're gonna to have to manipulate and rearrange this like we did on the last problem. So first things first, we're gonna square the equation just like before. We get T squared equals four times pi squared times L over G. Next, we're gonna rearrange for L. That's gonna give us L is equal to T squared times G divided by four times pi squared. All we do now is plug our numbers in and solve just like before. We find out that L should be equal to 0.49 meters. And that will take us to the end of our notes on simple harmonic motion.